In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, let us feel your compassion more readily during these days when by your gift we have known it more fully so that those who have freed from the darkness of error may cling more fully, firmly to the teachings of your truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, get up, head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethian opium eunuch, a court official of the Candace, that is, the queen of the Ethiopians in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I? unless someone instructs me. So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and, beginning with the scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent me being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop, and Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water, and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip came to Azotus, and went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Bless our God, you peoples, loudly sound his praise. He has given life to our souls and has not let our feet slip. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Hear now, all who fear God, 
while I declare what he has done for me. When I appealed to him in words, praise was on the tip of my tongue. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Blessed be God, who refused me not my prayer or his kindness. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Alleluia, alleluia. I am the living bread that came down from heaven, says the Lord. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to the crowds, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. As it is written in the prophets, they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Gospel of the Lord. All right, friends, we're in well now to John 6. And Jesus is getting more and more serious. And I've been preaching about John 6, how important it is. You need to know that as a Catholic inside and outside, frontwards and backwards. Because John 6 is where we truly understand that the Lord is at the Last Supper cannot be seen as speaking symbolically about his body and his blood. The Eucharist is not a symbol, it is a reality. And John 6 is one of the reasons, one of the main reasons why we know it is. Jesus closes that option off for symbolic or metaphorical understanding of his body and his blood. Having said that, let me pivot away from John 6 to our first reading, okay? because this reading is really critical from Acts of the Apostles. Yesterday, if you went to daily mass, you, under, you heard that a great persecution broke out in Jerusalem and scattered the Christians, which seems like a really terrible thing. And, and I'm sure living through it, it really was. But the effect of that is actually really good because all of these believers who were once just together on their own, are now scattered. And what do they do while they're scattered? It's not like they just curled up in a ball and sucked their thumb and wished the world was different. No, they start proclaiming Jesus. So it's like taking a bunch of fire, it's like a, a taking a bunch of logs that are on fire and scattering them across a dry field. And all of a sudden there's lots of fires. And that's what happens. And, and Philip is one of the key protagonists in that. He goes to this town in Samaria <clears throat> and he does exactly what Jesus did. He preaches, he casts out demons, and he heals. Exactly what Jesus did. Because he's an apostle. And we believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. Linda knows this. You might, the rest of you might need to be reminded. She knows this because her mind's like a steel trap, right? The church is the continuation of the incarnation across space and time. Okay, so what the apostles are doing, right, what Philip does in Acts of the Apostles is exactly what Jesus started. 
He's continuing the incarnation across space and time. And now watch how this works in this gospel, or in this passage from Acts, this first reading. Here's someone who is a sincere thinker and seeker of God, a non-Jew, an Ethiopian, who's going to Jerusalem to worship. So there is everything in his natural heart that wants to know God. He's wealthy, he's important. He has his own scroll of the prophet Isaiah. So an educated, cultured, rich man who cannot know exactly what he's reading until the Holy Spirit sends an apostle, sends Philip. It's a great story. The Spirit said to Philip, go and join up with that chariot. So he runs and he, you can just imagine the scene. This guy is reading the scroll of Isaiah as he's traveling in luxury. I mean, he's a royal official. And Philip runs up. And the first thing he says, he doesn't say hello. He doesn't say, how's your day going? He says, do you understand what you're reading? And the guy says, how can I unless someone explains it to me? It's exactly the role of the church. It's exactly the role of the bishops to interpret and to teach so that we would understand what has been passed on to us, both in scripture and in tradition. It's already present, not just in seed form, it's already present in the form that we currently have now in the Acts of the Apostles, just years after Jesus has died. And so then Philip explains it because the passage he's reading is really significant. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. Well, every one of us knows every reference to a lamb who is slaughtered and offered is a reference to the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Everybody knows that. We all know that, but he couldn't know that. So the eunuch says to Philip, I beg you, about whom is this prophet saying? About himself or about someone else? And then here it is. Then Philip opened his mouth and began, in beginning with this scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. Okay, now I could go on and on because there's more important things in this passage, but that's it right there that we can stop with and just say, okay, the role of the apostles from the very beginning down through their successors to our own Bishop Vetter today is to help us understand what has been handed to us, to apply it to our own lives. And it's always going to center on the person of Jesus Christ. Always. In all the things that a bishop has to do, it's always going to tie back to that key truth, proclaiming Jesus Christ and the impact that he has on our lives today. Sometimes it takes on issues in the culture and in the world. Always it's touching on issues that we deal with in our own heart. But that's the thing. St. John Paul II, he said that Jesus Christ is the answer to the question of the human heart. Ultimately, every question that is asked in the human heart finds its answer in Jesus Christ. And that's why we're members of an apostolic church. Now, I've been speaking about Philip the Apostle and then his successors, the bishops, but we are also members of that same apostolic church with that same mission. That's why we need to know our scriptures inside and out. That's why we need to know how to explain our faith inside and out. And that's why we have to have a vibrant prayer life. Because if you go back to the beginning of this passage, Philip is totally being directed by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit tells him, go and join up with that chariot. The Spirit is leading him. That's because he's rooted and grounded in prayer. And that's for us too, because the Lord will send us out. That's what apostle means, one who is sent. He will send us out. And who knows where he's gonna send you? Maybe to your neighbor, maybe to your friend, maybe to a family member who's distant, maybe to the checker at Vans. You know, I was just shopping just the other day. 
at a store. And the lady looks up and she's like, oh, where are you from? I was wearing my collar and I said, oh, I'm at the cathedral. And she's like, I have been meaning to come there. I'm, this is a sign. And she was all happy about it. This is a sign. I'm like, it is. It absolutely is. I said, come. Here's where our masses are. She's like, I'm going to come now. And I'm like, good, I'll see you. I said, if I'm there, you can't leave until you say hi to me at the end of mass. She's like, good, okay, okay. That's how the Lord works for all of us. Not just for me, but for all of us. So let's live in that joy. This is the joy of Easter, led by the Spirit, formed by the church, and ready to respond to what God invites us to be a part of. We bring our prayers to our Heavenly Father this evening. We pray for the church throughout the world, for our Holy Father, for our bishop, for all who lead and guide us, that all the apostles, the successors to the apostles of the church would be strengthened this day by a gift of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our cathedral parish, that everyone who enters this beautiful church would have a direct and personal encounter with Jesus Christ, who is risen from the dead, we pray to the Lord. For our brothers and sisters to whom the Lord sends us as his apostles of love and mercy, we lift up especially those who are poor, those who are burdened, those who are hurting this day, we pray to the Lord. We pray for more vocations to the priesthood and for those to come from our parish, we pray to the Lord. And for each of us, that the vibrancy of life in the Holy Spirit, which is a participation in the resurrection of Jesus, would fill our hearts with joy and mission and purpose, we pray to the Lord. Jesus, we give you these and all our prayers. Let your will be done in us and through us. We ask this in your most holy name. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, who will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and the integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Austin Anthony, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Christ died for all, that those who live may live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and is risen. Alleluia. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways 
the newness of life. Through Christ, our Lord. A couple of prayer requests and then a thing to put on your calendar. So prayer requests, this week is a great week. We continue and some, the Lord is very active. So on Sunday, we have 107, I think it's 175, maybe 165 young people receiving the sacrament of confirmation here from the deanery, right? So this place is going to be packed. Uh, so please intercede for that. If you need a, a direction in prayer, uh, pray the third glorious mystery, the descent of the Holy Spirit. If you need an image of that, you can look and back to our, see our lady there gathered with all the apostles, right? Um, interceding uh, for them as they receive the Holy Spirit for the first time. So pray that mystery. Um, and then at Carroll, there's 17 students who are um, coming into full communion with the church. So we have five baptisms. I think we have five full communions and then seven students receiving the sacrament of confirmation. That's also on Sunday. So the Lord's at work. You know, this church is not dying. We're not dying. We're not going anywhere, right? Um, the Lord's good. He's drawn hearts. So pray for those young hearts who are going to receive sacraments. That's a really good thing. Then the announcement is two weeks from today. Uh, so not next Thursday, but the following. We have a special guest in town. There's a priest, Father Augustine. He's a Dominican priest. He's coming to do some work with a lay Dominican group that's in Townsend, Helena area. And he's going to come preach. And then after Mass, it'll be a little bit like the Sisters of Life. He'll come downstairs. We'll do a little potluck. So we need to start spreading the word about that. Get a meal together. And then he'll do a teaching on Our Lady. And um, there's a specific confraternity Right, Josh, you gotta be faster, man. She's quick. Nina's fast. So move, okay? <laughs> she doesn't. She's like the Holy Spirit. She doesn't like to be contained, right? You can't contain her. You can just hopefully ride with her, right? So, um, okay. So that's next, or not next Thursday, but the following May second. Okay. So that's a great thing. Let's spread the word a little bit. That's exactly why we moved this mass to five thirty so that we would have a platform to be able to do faith formation afterwards. And, and uh, I talked to him on the phone. We're in for a, a good treat. Um, he's a Dominican out of Seattle and uh, just well-formed in that charism and a good, yeah, it's going to be good. It'll be good for us. Okay, so that's two Thursdays from today. Great. Thanks for praying. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Do thou, o prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.